Welcome to another episode of Same Cast Different Day Podcast. I'm your host, Marta Roland, and I am live on Facebook right now. And Old Yeller, aka Darrell, is actually watching the live and is going to help me out in the comments with some of this uh, shenanigans that's going on in the world. So, what I had wanted to talk about was Jacob Blake. If y'all don't know who Jacob Blake is, he was the black man in Kenosha, Wisconsin, that was shot seven times by. Uh, a police officer and the police officer they decided to, to not file charges against a police officer and a lot of people are very upset with that now my only thing is about that whole situation with jacob blake is from what i heard is that they did try to taser him the taser was unsuccessful they tried other maneuvers and that was unsuccessful and when he tried to get in the car with the knife the officer shot him now I feel like he should have just at that point when they were trying to arrest him, he should just gave up and just went to jail and just called it a loss or whatever. Now, the only thing I disagree with with the police officers is that they didn't have to shoot him seven times. That's the only thing I, that I disagree with is that they did not have to shoot him seven times. And then on top of that, um, I believe it was kids in the car. So, you know, if one of those bullets with a ricochet off the kids, I mean, with ricochet somewhere and hit one of those kids in the car or or one of the hundreds of tens of people, well, I should say tens of twenties of people who were uh, standing around watching this whole situation go down. So I, I feel like he could have been more cautious when he were when he did pull, pull his gun to shoot. He could have been more cautious. Um, but in the midst of all of this, though, Kyle Rittenhouse, who uh, after the Jacob Blake was shot by the police, was in a bar drinking, partying, kind of having fun while he's indicted for two murder charges. And on top of that, I don't believe Kyle Rittenhouse is even old enough to even be in a bar drinking and doing these kind of things. Because he wasn't even at the time of the shooting. He wasn't even old enough to even own or buy that kind of gun. So that was a big... Uh, you know where it flagged for me and then the bar owner whoever whatever bar he was in basically you know they agree and stand for what kyle rittenhouse did which is shooting and killing two innocent people which i don't agree with um so old yeller wants to try to call me to be on the podcast and like i said before that means i have to set up a whole another microphone and then fix audio issues because it's going to be like a little buzzing noise and i got to try to figure out how to fix that and i don't really f- trying to figure out fix that you figure see what i'm using now and the mic my microphone sits up here so it'd be kind of hard to do that um i mean i can turn the gain up a little bit and then hopefully but i don't know how clear you guys will be able to hear him um I mean, we can try. Okay, one second. Hold on. All right. So my brother Marcus said that um, the bar owner had to know that Kyle Rittenhouse was underage at the time while he was in the bar drinking and parlaying like nothing in the world was going on. I mean, I guess in Kyle's mind, he thinks that he's going to beat this case. But I can't see I cannot see no way possible of Kyle Rittenhouse beating this this murder case. And if they decide to. Ooh, If they decide to let him get off with murder, that just shows that, you know, there's no justice in America whatsoever when it comes to white supremacists and white supremacists are going to continue to get away with the shenanigans that they got going on. What is going on with you? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, he just turned 18 like last week or something, a couple days or something like that. Like, he just turned 18 this year, sometime in January. And he was in a bar drink. Okay, and that plus, this is that And he's not going to beat that murder because he's clearly on tape. And there are thousands of witnesses saying he shot these kids. Mm-hmm. And they're going to keep on, like, spillers for real. That would have been a black dude. And shot two white dudes. He'd have got murdered right I mean, yeah, but at least the black dude, they, the they would have went through the whole fair trial process by now. And before, well, I wouldn't say by now, but it would have started at least by now, the whole fair trial thing. And, you know, he wouldn't be out walking around freely. No, 
right now if this was had been somebody of 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 a minority. He'd be in jail with a million dollar bond. Uh, I mean, he did have a very high bond, but one of those actor people decided to uh, yeah. bail him out. Exactly. So, and it's a lot of shenanigans that's been going on, especially with white supremacists and everything that's been going on. And it, it's like I said, like and like I said in the last podcast, it's like it's crazy that it took for riots to happen for them to start opening their eyes and looking. And seeing what is going on with uh, what how people of minority or foreign descent are treated here in America, and and like I said, like it 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 shouldn't be like that. When we tried the whole peaceful protest movement, it 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 it, it, it didn't go as planned, and like nothing was heard. And like I said, they just let people basically chant their little hearts out, and that was that at that point. I think my thing is. It was peaceful when we were when they were processing by themselves. It became unpeaceful when the police got involved. <clears throat> when stopping the National Guard team and police stopping their protest, that's when it became unpeaceful. They were doing perfectly fine, walking down the streets, chanting by themselves, not bothering nobody. As soon as the police came, that's when they started to get around it because they started messing with these people for no reason. <clears throat> people they said that doing tear gas and blocking people from doing what they gotta do. That's what made it that's that's when they became unpeaceful. That's when they became rowdy and dis- and disrespectful. At this point, you know what I'm saying? What the, but they showed them do this stuff at the Capitol. The people broke down the barriers and kicked down doors. That there would have been a group of black people. I mean i I keep saying it, it, it I can't say even if it was it, even if I understood but I wouldn't say even if it was just black people, if it was Mexicans, if it was Israeli people, you know, uh, people who they look at as terrorists overseas, like let there have been some of them people, like let there have been Muslim people at the Capitol doing some of them things, they would have dropped a bomb on them so fast, it would, it, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have seen it coming. It would have been dead by all over the Capitol steps. Exactly. It would have been, been more than five people dead. I can tell you that. Yeah. They're shooting inside the Capitol. That. The National, and the National, the National Guard would have been there earlier than the 7 o'clock. <clears throat> they said they would have been there at 4 o'clock when it first happened. They said at 7 o'clock. I feel like when they should have been later. there when Trump is at that podium giving his speech about marching to, <sighs> about marching to the Capitol. That's when I think that they should have been there. <laughs> at that point, they should have been mobilizing. After he did that speech. They were in the Capitol destroying everything. Trump was nowhere to be found. <clears throat> Cause he was at in a, and he was in the White House watching it, watching it all happen. Yeah. He, he can, and they can get it, it's a special on Hulu called Twenty Four Hours Something Protest on Hulu. Please go watch it. They said you know the inside story of everything that happened. They tried to contact this man the whole night. You he be, was nowhere to be found. You don't became a Hulu whore. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, right, he, 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 didn't call, he didn't call the National Guard until 7 o'clock. That is true. And it, what, one thing I was trying to figure out was, um, like I said, I can't remember the names, but I believe it was two Arizona representatives, and I believe one, I believe Texas or Georgia representative, who this man went on, I believe, live TV and told them, like, we had to help planning this by a congressman. In in the house in the, in, the, in the Capitol building that we stormed, we had help from three of them. And my mom, and my mom did say that last night. She did say that she felt like it was inside job that somebody. And I didn't believe her. Now that you said that, now that I do, no. I feel so bad because I didn't have to play with her about it. It wasn't an inside job, but I just said that it was. Now that she said it was an inside job, that's crazy. Yeah, like this man, he has done interviews and everything, and. A lot of these, and then the people who he accused of helping him, uh, one of them has sent like multiple messages to him when he was doing these rallies and stuff, and uh, you know, so some of these people who have, who this man has accused of helping, helping them, you know, plan this attack on the Capitol, uh, has had contact and have pr- and have proof 
that he has had contact with these congressmen and women. I don't know if it's any women, just putting it out there, men and women, who, you know, helped him uh, basically help these these terrorists attack the Capitol. And I feel like these people, the people who helped plan that attack, needs to lose their job. Because how else will they know where everybody's office is at? Well, I don't think they knew for sure where people' offices that. I just think at that time they just got the Roman. Yeah, they at this point on that show that I watched, they said they was walking around like tourists. Yeah. And they was just going around. Every, they was on every floor. My thing is, some of these offices hidden and private. Mm-hmm. They end up getting they get end up getting attention from the offices, taking pictures at their desks, still in their podiums, still in their name tags off their door. It's crazy. I I've been to uh it was crazy. I've been to I believe Congresswoman Gwen Moore's office in DC. Their offices are not that big there. <laughs> I like to be a congressman and woman like I'm y'all offices sure are not. little. I'm pretty sure it's not. I I mean I've been inside her office. It's not that big. And then look at Pelosi's office from the pictures I've seen. It didn't look that big. Yeah, I'm like, geez, you would expect the. I, I mean, I guess the building was built in like 18 something, so. <laughs> I don't down some walls, make my office bigger. She's the speaker of the house. Yeah, but at least it's not care. like she's going to be the permanent she's speaker of the house. She's, she, she, if she's third in line to be president, if anything happens, if everybody's president, she'll be president. So she'll get a bigger office. I mean, then she just take over the White House at that point. I mean, she, she's that she's that girl. <laughs> yeah, and. Saying. And then you was asking about the inauguration. So uh, I don't know exactly what like venue they plan on using for once he he is sworn in. But I know like I know I think I remember like Demi Lovato was one of the people that named as a performer for Joe Biden's inauguration. No, I think my, 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 my concern was well, they're still gonna go as as planned, which I know I said they are. It's just gonna be for, be for security. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got enough skilled workers to be able to get put all that stuff back together quite fast. So I'm not, I'm pretty sure all that stuff would be together. Like I said, the the inauguration is going to go on as planned. We're going to see it on TV. Like I said, more than likely, we're just not going to see like the hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people uh, there at the inauguration. And uh, I don't know if anybody's seen, because uh, I have got to talk about this on last week's episode, but I don't. I don't know if anybody's seen Donald Trump's video that he had put out, uh, uh, I want to say Tuesday it came out. And so, yeah, like I said, I don't know if y'all seen that video, but he did not seem sincere whatsoever. It seemed so scripted. It was so unbelievable. He keep on saying that he don't, uh, condone what happened on the Capitol, but as, but these are the same people that you told to storm the Capitol to try to overturn our democracy and our voting uh, process and so on. So for it just didn't nothing about what he said seemed genuine whatsoever. I'm so sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, that was the main thing that I, I don't I don't understand how you go from praising people to now you want to try to condone everything that they're doing like that is just you just, you just can't go backwards. There's no going back from what you did, and there's no trying, no saving what you did at this point. There's no, yeah, there's nothing peaceful about a Trump supporter. We we are peaceful until you make us upset. Black, black, well, black, 
black folks is not what black folks not gonna do is do what they did. They met they met out there and they had a protest all night in front of the Capitol. But one thing is black folks would not have went through them doors and went inside that building. Dennis, and they what have, never did that. and one thing we ain't got time for, we ain't got time for federal charges. So all them people who are no, being no. arrested We ain't got time we ain't got time to get shot. Never. That too. Like so they're that. Yeah, they're getting charged with federal crimes, these people, and and you know, at the end of the day, it's like we we that's not something we want <laughs> at this point. Like we don't want that kind of smoke, but at that point, but we it, at, at the end of the day, it's like at some point, it's 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 finally nice to see how so many people have opened up their eyes to what is going on, and then it's crazy seeing some people of a certain uh, race who. Oh, that, my microphone just fell. <laughs> it's crazy how some people of a certain race now is getting upset about, you know, how these Trump supporters has now portrayed them in the public eye and basically made them look like complete fools. And and like I said, it's, it's you you got to blame Trump for making y'all look like idiots. At the end of the day, it's Trump's fault. I mean, yeah. I mean, but it's like two two idiots don't make a a, a right person. I don't know. <laughs> it, it don't. Two, two idiots make what happens at the, at the Capitol. That, that's what two idiots make. Stuff like that. Right. And it's crazy because a lot of the people who did storm the Capitol was like hillbillies and people like rednecks and all them kind of people. Like, he ain't got, he ain't got, he ain't gonna do nothing for y'all whatsoever. He hasn't done nothing for any of you in the last four years that he's been in office, he has did Jack Diddley's quiet. But yeah, you now y'all ready to go to jail and face federal crime for a president who has done nothing for you in the last four years, unless you make over two million dollars a year. So a man who don't even know you or don't even care about you, don't even know your name. He know your name now because now you're the news for being stupid and ignorant. Right. Yeah. America. They wanted to overturn the election. They wanted to scare to scare them into overturning the election and give it to, to Trump. It was, it was, it's ten days until inauguration. At that time, it was ten days until inauguration. It's over with. I mean, but at the time, like the the electoral college wasn't confirmed, so vote Joe Biden wasn't the confirmed winner yet when they stormed the Capitol. I mean, yeah, was no true. Even doing that. I mean, they just thought they just thought that they was gonna do that and they was gonna make it better. No, everybody knew that that the Joe was gonna win. I so mean, they now. they just wanted to overturn the the elections, the results of the election, and that's really what the whole point of that was. And Trump wanted so them to do it. So I'm thinking they were gonna act, act a fool. That was gonna make them change. They, that first of all, that made them look at them different. Even if they was gonna overturn, they would be like, oh no. Nope. Nope, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna need four more years of this. Right. Hell no. So that made some of the job different, even if they was gonna go towards the Trump way. They switched it off anyway because we want four more years of that. Half the Republicans have to turn their back on this man. That is true. <coughs> you know, with them people need they need to believe in the power of the Christmas tree. That's what they need. Uh, Christmas tree. See my thing is okay, first of all, it has never been in the history of a, in the presidency of our nations, have a president, a sitting president at that, said he wasn't going to be at the inauguration. This man said he's not going to be at the he's not at the inauguration. I know. Did you know that? My, my mic fell again. I don't know what's going on with my microphone. But even, uh, I don't know whoever, the, I think he was the president before uh, Bush's dad. He's still alive. He's 92 years old. So this would be the first inauguration that he has not attended since, uh, Due, and it's due to COVID. So if COVID wasn't happening, he would have been at the inauguration for Joe Biden. But due to the circumstances of COVID, that's the only reason why he's not going to be there. No, I, I'm saying, I'm saying, as a city, I'm about the president. Yeah, I know, as but Trump, not, not, not former president. Yeah, I know. What I, what I was going is that Trump is just a sore loser and just not going to accept the fact that he lost, and then that's why he's choosing 
not to go and he keep on saying it's going to be a peaceful transition of power and yet we have yet to see it and like they said on cnn if there was if there was going to be a transition of power he would have conceded uh weeks ago if there was going to be a transition of power instead of following all these lawsuits trying to overturn uh election results Word. You know, once, once, once he's done being, once they that, once he's done being president, that man is going to jail. And he knows that he knows that if he stay in office, he's not going to go to jail. But now that he's out of office, he knows he's going to jail. All that stuff he did in his past four years, all that fraud, and all this other bull crap, the man is going to jail. Point blank, period. And yep. he, he knows it. I mean, yeah, and he could, and he could uh, pardon himself too, exactly. to not go from not going to jail. So exactly, so that's why they're waiting till this man get out of. That's why they're trying to impeach him. So that's why he won't have no. Hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Yeah, you know, he can't have anything presidential at all. Yeah, that's that's why I kept on saying like they can impeach him all he wants to. Like, oh, Trump being impeached a second time. Like, oh, first president. To be impeached two times in American history, like, like I said, they can impeach him all his all he all they want to, but the impeachment don't matter if they don't convict him. And the only reason I want them to convict him is that so that in twenty twenty four he cannot run for president again. And that way, even if a Republican does win in four years, at least it'd be a competent Republican in office. If if Joe Biden was to lose in four more years, is what I'm saying. None. He was, he was never a senator, a governor, a mayor, a congressman, none of that. This man was a reality star. Mm-hmm. A trash man at that. Yeah, That's true. That's right there. If you, have, if you got money, you can do whatever you want to in this country if you got money. Yep, you can, you can even he buy the White House. He, that he bought the White House. That's exactly what he did. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're Russia's help. And he's ignorant as Republican. Right. All right. So I want to hear some opinions from you all out there. So don't forget, y'all can hit me up on uh, well, hit hit the podcast up on Twitter and Instagram, which is at SCDD Podcast, and you can follow me on Instagram at Martel Rowland. And don't forget to find me on Facebook, uh, which is the Mark Tyrone fan page. Make sure y'all go like and subscribe to that where I do. Uh, I try to do uh, daily video blogs on there. Uh, I am no longer on Twitter just for the simple fact that Twitter just seemed very unsafe. And they basically let anybody hack your page and turn into a whole something else and become a whole different thing. So I am no longer on Twitter and I probably will not be making another Twitter page in the near future. So... <laughs> With that being said, I want to thank you all for listening to this episode of Same Cast, Different Day podcast. Uh, finally, I want to thank Darrell for actually participating in the episode of Same Cast, Different Day podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, whatever. Anyways, thank you all for listening. I hope that y'all tune in next week.